In this video, I want to talk to you guys about uh, light selection as far as like EDC handheld lights. I believe that handheld lights are the more important light rather than weapon mounted light for a couple of reasons. Weapon mounted lights, there's not very many good weapon mounted lights out there on the market that I would like recommend. There's only like, I don't think there's even a half dozen weapon mounted lights that I would actually recommend to people. Uh, so holster selection is going to get a lot of really trivial on this and you know the amount of money you're going to have to spend to adapt for weapon lights i mean for me personally i rarely use a weapon light anymore after you know after using you know weapon mounted lights for professional uses and certain things unless i'm using a long gun uh, weapon mounted lights have kind of have lost their application especially as a civilian uh, as a civilian it's not really something that I can really take advantage of all that much. I know a lot of people are going to say, well, in home defense, well, you have this amazing thing called electricity at your house, hopefully. Uh, and if you don't, then sure, maybe weapon mounted light, but there's probably things that happened left of bang that were you needed to identify whether a weapon was warranted or not. So, you know, again, we come around this little circle of handheld light's going to do more for you in the long run as a civilian than you know, unless you're a law enforcement officer that is justified in using a firearm for de-escalation or in preparatory staging, which means you can use the light on your weapon if you feel there is a threat to safety. So, I'm going to go over a few lights that I have, and I'm going to talk to you guys about the purposes each one serves, and hopefully it'll help you guys get an idea of how to select a light based on what you're trying to um, use it for. So first one I'll talk about is the um, most current acquisition I got, this 90X from Streamlight. You got a really nice clip here, so you can get a nice uh, clip on your pocket, upside down or right side up. You can secure it to, you know, a shirt like so, and turn on the light so you have, you know, a way to navigate in the dark or whatever. Uh, you can even pin it to your baseball cap and kind of use it as like its own little headlamp or whatever. So there's a lot of applications you can use this for. You can use it for general utility and that's how I use it. It's a thousand lumen light uh, that's got a right angle to it so it's a little more intuitive for for use rather than holding it you know here and you know having the light in that different direction. So I find it a lot easier to maneuver around in all these odd little thing just this way and pointing out and engaging with a firearm. So for me, I think that this serves a very good utilitarian um, service, but only really in areas where there's a lot of open ground and there's a lot of ground to cover in between. This is not something that I would use for very close, you know, illumination inside of a vehicle, unless I'm shining this light outside of a vehicle with minimal reflection threat I, I guess you could say where you know i'm not really going to be shining it through a windshield it's going to roll down the window check out whatever is over there and that's it this has a rechargeable battery inside of it uh, it puts out a good amount of lumens for a good amount of time if you're going to be using this in as a carry light often i would recommend uh, just using regular one two disposable one two threes for carry use this rechargeable battery in here for training uh, rechargeable batteries will uh, do a lot more for you in the long run as far as like training is concerned versus like carry because you do lose lumens over time with rechargeable batteries all right but they are a great training tool so uh, that's it for the 90 degree one that's my general tactical like a long range utility uh, general utility light now let's talk about a combat light that I favor over all now this 90X, it has a it has a pretty good you know wide hot spot on it, um, but it, it does have a generous spill to it too. So it's a, it's a pretty wide angle light, very good for utilitarian use and seeing a wide area. But this Surefire light is even better because there is no real hot spot to it. The whole uh, cast of it is more diffuse so almost the entire thing is the hot spot for lack of a better term so the the lumens is really spread out or the candela whatever um so it's all just one nice consistent illumination you don't have a little hot spot that'll give you more detail than the spill and stuff like that that can be frustrating and a lot of times at night when people are 
you know, feeling threatened or anxious or something like that, they tend to focus on that hot spot and not really see what else is going on around. Um, Surefire kind of fixed that with the, the max vision that I got on this combat light. And plus, they designed it to use their little Surefire holding syringe technique where you hold it like this and you bump it with your palm while you're shooting two-handed. So, is it perfect like a weapon mounted light? Absolutely not. It's not going to give you a perfect two-handed grip, but it will give you a little more stability. Generally speaking, I do just fine shooting one-handed from close range, which is probably the primary application of, you know, most engagements in low light, unless you're an officer and it's expected that you're going to have to, you know, get distance and deal with some. Then, you know, weapon mounted light obviously makes more sense, but you should probably be getting to a long gun at that point. But anyways, situation dictates, right? Who am I to say? So that's it for this. I can carry disposable one, two, threes. I, I often do uh, on in carry, but in training, again, I use rechargeable one, two, three batteries for training. So, uh, one note about rechargeable batteries. Uh, rechargeable batteries will typically boost your lumen count a little bit just because they're able to put out a little more juice at first, but then it gradually goes down. And that's something you won't see in disposable one, two, threes. Disposable one, two, threes, you'll get constant uh, lumens uh, throughout the entire life of the battery for the most part except for like the last like five or ten percent So that's been my experience. So that's these two right here good pretty good carry options If uh, if the idea is having something that can actually like blind people, but also, you know, give you a good throw at distance good, good potential combat lights now if you want something that's kind of going to stretch but be more of a uh, utilitarian light, then I'll go with something like this little stream light right here. This is a rechargeable light, and I simply plug this in and let it charge. Uh, so with this one, uh, it is more of a utilitarian light, and a kind of you're really stretching its capabilities by uh, using it to fight with because... I, the number one, the lumens aren't really there. Half the purpose of your light, I think, today, because of the ability of a lot of lights, you should have the ability to get something that has lumens that can blind. So if it's going to be used for a tactical setting, I think that it should be somewhere around 1,000 lumens at least, uh, or at least 800 like the combat light. Uh, there's just so many more advantages, so I'll take away 200 lumens just to get the advantages of that combat light uh, from Surefire. But anyways, with this... This one, this is a flat dark earth version of this little light. Uh, the first one is a bright setting. Second one is a very dim setting. So reading something on paper very close up, reading IDs or something like that. If you're in a professional setting where you're working a lot in vehicles, you're shining lights very close to people. Maybe you work in executive protection or you do physical security or maybe even just an officer and, you know, you just need a, a little light that'll that'll fit, not going to add all that much weight or whatever, whatever your needs are. If it's mostly utilitarian use, um, then this light would rain king. I, I use this light way more than any other one, and it can still flex and be, in, be used in a tactical sense because what's the most important part of this? Is it the blinding feature or the target identification? Okay, it's probably the target identification, and you can still get a good life out of this and still get a good amount of lumens out of it, and get the most important part of that, which is target identification. Is it going to blind them? No. However, are you going to identify them? Yes, absolutely. And you can still use this in a syringe technique, you know, when you're, you know, shooting the pistol. And this clip actually works very good for that in bracing, you know, your index finger up against it and doing a hold like so. But... Yeah, you just got to practice with it. It is kind of a strong little switch. And so, yeah, you just have to practice with that tail switch. It's not all that sensitive like uh, Surefire lights or some of the other stream lights. So, anyways, those are, the, those are the reasons I have these different lights and, you know, how I use them and stuff. But I'm sure there's a lot of other things that I could uh, talk about with each light if I was to dissect each one. But I'm just kind of trying to touch everything from 50 thousand feet but give you enough detail to kind of understand how selection of each light works so anyways dedicated um, more leaning towards you know a, a potential tactical use right here like going on a road trip or whatever something where I'm going into a hot zone where it's very likely that I'm gonna have to use my firearm i.e. hunting or 
uh, going out somewhere where likelihood of having animals and you're going to be working at night and you know it. Or stuff where, you know, general everyday life, but it can still flex in a tactical sense. So, you know, that's how I, that's how I make my selection. So I got my three, you know, favorite uh, lights for different purposes. But let me know what you think and what some of your favorite lights are. And let me know that, about those in the comments below. And thanks a lot for watching. And you guys have a good one.